Hello and welcome to Vensloof Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at web servers and applications, their threats, vulnerabilities, and countermeasures against these. We will focus on security risk against an application running on a web server. So first of all, we'll just quickly take a look at a web server and some of the attacks that can be used there before we'll jump over to the application part. So what is a web server? Basically, a web server is one who provide and serve clients requesting resources from it. So whenever you are using, for example, your mobile or your computer to enter a website, you are the client that is requesting that particular resource. And the web server is, in the other end, serving that request, giving the name server. So some of the attacks that can be used against a server and not the application is, for example, directory traversal where you're similar to when you are going into documents and folders on your own computer, the server is structured in the same way. So resources, resources on the server is stored into different server no, folders and have a particular path. So if you're not protected against this, users might get access or malicious users might get access to resources that you didn't intend to be public available. So even though that you don't show them on your web page and link to them, if they are placed on the server in a way that is wrongly configured, people might try to run a directory traversal against the server to discover hidden folders that you don't intentionally want to show them. And that could be, for example, a folder containing some user logs where passwords are stored or other credential information. And secondly, we have the Metasploit, which is an application that can be used to test uh, against a uh, security risk on a, on a web server. Metasploit can automate this by executing a lot of different attacks at once and then you can get a quick overview of how vulnerable your server is, but it is also used by hackers and malicious people to do real attacks against you. So it is wisely to get familiar with Metasploit or get someone who is familiar with it to try run some of the basic and most popular attacks against the web server just to be on the safe side so that simple script kiddies won't just open up the Metasploit and hit your server and then exploit it in, in any bad way. And then we have the website mirroring, which is a technique where you uh, take a copy of the entire web page website and then try to find vulnerabilities locally by taking the entire resource down to your local machine where a malicious user can try different things out and look at the code to find some vulnerabilities that he can take onto the real web server online and use without trigger alerts when he have tried to hit, for example, a hundred different inputs that will probably trigger an alert in most uh, modern web servers. But since you are doing this locally, he will not trigger that and he can wait until he finds something that is useful and then just try it once on the web server online. So that was quickly about the web servers. Now we'll be moving into the web application part where we'll look at security risk based on the OWASP top 10. So we have these top 10 security risk here, which we are going to dive into. We will be looking at what they are and how we can prevent and protect our web application web application against them. So first off, we have the injection. And what is injection? An injection of code is when a given user, for example, we see here, are trying to input something into a user input field that is not intended there. And in this case, we are looking at SQL injection. There are other injection forms, for example, OS command, um, but here we are looking at SQL injection where in a username and password field, a user could try to input some SQL statement that will in all cases return true and then the database will just act on that and return all the information uh, in that given table. So for example here he has says, said that if 1 equals 1, which is always true, then this should act upon that and most likely if your web location are vulnerable to that you will be uh, returning information that the user are not intended to see or the malicious user are not intended to see so this is one of the attacks that is very important to protect against and 
we still see even larger companies in 2020 being vulnerable to this attack. So this is definitely something to pay attention to. And the way that you can prevent this is to check the input that the users are given and not only in the front end, but also in the back end, because if you take front end verification only and validation, then the users can again just manipulate the HTML and the JavaScript on the on their local browser machine and then request your server uh, by going around these validations. So you also have to have backend validation to ensure that people are not just going around because then it doesn't make any sense to, to have front end protection. So the second one is broken authentication. And broken authentication is when your application is vulnerable to, for example, session hijacking where a user is logging in and he's getting an ID which says, okay, this is this particular user and he has these right, but then an attacker somehow using a vulnerability in your web application is capable of getting this ID or this token and then he is acting like he was this user and can thereby make changes to the application in a way that this user has access to. And a way to prevent this is, of course, never uh, deploy any default credentials, store the passwords using a one-way hash function, such that if your database of user accounts is getting leaked, you should not just store these passwords in plain text, so that everybody can use other people's credentials. And you also need to ensure that there are, for example, a limited attempt of authentication to the server such that you cannot make a script that tries a thousand different uh, password combinations in a minute because what human will do that if they actually have a real uh, account on your system basically no one so that is another way and then we have the sensitive data exposure and a good example here is when yahoo uh, got hit by this and they actually uh, confirmed that 3 billion user accounts were affected by this hacking attack, meaning that 3 billion user accounts got some of their information leaked in different hacking forums and online where it was public for people who knew how to access it to, to view. And that is, of course, not something that we no, nobody ever want for their web application. And a good way, again, to prevent this is use a password hashing function to store passwords because if the database is then leaked, you at least are sure that it is not in plain text. And you should also be careful of what protocols you are using um, in order to check that what is coming in and out of your system is using the right uh, security protocol and is not communicating in plain text. For example, you should never have your web application communicating with the server in plain HTTP, but you should also always use an encrypted uh, protocol, for example, HTTPS. Then we have the XML external in entities, and that is something that happens when an application is passing XML inputs and responses back and forth and when an application is doing this at, and this is not in an encrypted way, an attacker might be able to manipulate with the input to the server in XML and then request something from the server that was not intended by the developers. So it is very important here that you uh, implement, if you are using XML, that you implement uh, a positive uh, whitelisting such that it is only uh, a limited amount of input that is valid for your uh, XML request because then all XML input that is not part of this whitelisting will simply be blocked and thereby limiting the damage that such attack can, uh, can inflict on your application. Then we have number five, which is the broken access control. And a broken access control is, as we see here, that when you have different roles for users and these roles have different um, authorization mechanisms. For example, a basic user can log in, he can see his 
profile name, profile page, and he can change his own password. Then you might have an admin role that can view all the other users' profiles, and he can maybe make changes to the web application itself to make it behave in different ways. And when these are conflicting and you are not have not implemented this in the right way, you might risk that malicious users try to exploit this access control by getting by getting themselves uh, into a position where they have in your application's view a higher uh, uh, authentication, authentication authorization than intended by you. So they will try to get access to an admin level where they can do some stuff that they were not intended to because they were only the basic users. And a good way to prevent this is always follow the principle of least privileged, meaning that you should never give a given uh, role more access than that needs because there's no reason for, for example, an admin to be able to um, change uh, password and see uh, passwords of the roles beneath him because why should an admin ever go into a web application and see these because the developers will uh, always have access to the main database if they are trusted and can see these information and again if you use a secure way of storing the password not even the developers will be able to see it because the passwords are hashed so there are definitely something that you should consider when implementing uh, access control uh, within your web application. Then we have the security misconfiguration, and that is pretty much, much as the name uh, says. When you have an application and you have configured in in a way that make it vulnerable, you are in real problem. And for example, that could be that you have unprotected files or that we saw, like we saw with the web server, if you have files placed on a server that is actually public, but you are thinking it's private, then people might ha might get access to this information anyways. A good way to prevent against this is to remove and never install any unnecessary features or dependencies into your server or in the development of your application because the less features and the less dependencies and packages and libraries you are having on the server and the web application, the easier it is to control and the less uh, you, the less likely you are to miss some of these configurations up and make your application vulnerable. Then we have the cross-site scripting where people are trying to input stuff into, for example, user uh, input fields similar to when we saw SQL injection, but here we are seeing it such that people try to, for example, in an input field, inject some scripts that is then going to be saved to the database, for example, in a comment field. And then when another user tries to go into the web page, like he normally would, then that comment field is getting loaded from the database, and then the script might get executed on his machine, even though the attacker and the uh, user has never interacted directly. He is still getting attacked by this hacker because he managed to save some script in the database and the database and application just loaded the, it because it thought that it was a basic comment. So it's also important to be very aware of this and also use the right frameworks to protect against this. So again, be aware of what framework you are using and try to use the standard within that framework to uh, escape these types of attack by, for example, have validation in your field input fields and never allow your application to store certain types of uh, signs in the database. It will insecure deserialization when data is stored or transmitted it is done so in bytes and these are serialized so if we as we see here when you have a basic object and you want to transfer that it is getting serialized into a stream of bytes which is then going into for example the database or into memory on the machine and then when you want to read this again you transfer this into 
from a stream of byte where it has been stored into the actual object again. And if you're not aware of how this is working, you can actually uh, open up for modification of this when the serialization is happening, such that the object that you serialized is not the same, which is getting transferred back into an object when it is deserialized. And that might uh, damage the application or the data so source that you intentionally wanted to save. So a good way to prevent against this is to implement uh, integrity checks and encrypt the serialization of the object to prevent that malicious people or people outside the application scope can read and tamper with this uh, stream of bytes. And then we have number nine, which is using components with known vulnerabilities. This is also similar to the security misconfiguration. So when you are using different components or libraries uh, in your web application, you should always update them and keep them updated because new vulnerabilities might be discovered after you build your application. And if you are not updating these, your application will be vulnerable to these attacks. And that is also why we keep seeing for us who use Windows, for example, 10, that Windows 10 is pu uh, pushing these security updates because the Windows that we have today might be vulnerable to certain attacks just two months ago. So if you haven't updated your Windows in just two months, you might be at risk. And it is the same for mobile phones because new attacks is always popping up and people are trying all kind of things to try to break into these different applications and software systems. And the vendors are, if they are good vendors, they are trying to fix these as quickly as possible to avoid their users being affected. So you should always try to update and search for dependency and library updates when you have a web application, because if you are not, you will most likely risk being attacked when the right users discover that you have an unpatched uh, library or using an old module on your web application. Then we have number 10, which is insufficient logging and monitoring. And as the name says, if you're not logging or monitoring your web application, you don't know what is going on. So you need to be aware of what is going on with your web application and have the right triggers and alarms set up to respond in time because else people can just sit for days and try different things out. And if you are not discovering that someone is trying to timber with your application, you have no way of stopping them because at one point they will hit the, the golden button and actually find a vulnerability and you will never discover that they tried to, to find this and you will never discover that they actually got into the system before it's too late. So always log and monitor your web application. It is crucial crucial um, in order to stop your web application from being exploited. So this was all for this video. Remember to like and subscribe and then I will see you next time here on Vinslov Academy.